There are good reasons why so many women and physicians are horrified by what's happened since Donald Trump's justices overturned Roe v. Wade. So please, please do not hand our fates over to the likes of Trump, who knows nothing about us, who has shown deep contempt for us. Because a vote for him is a vote against us. At a campaign trail of Kamala Harris ahead of the U.S. presidential election, former First Lady Michelle Obama made a searing appeal to American men to vote for the rights of women. Her speech touched upon the consequences of the 2022 Supreme Court decision to overturn the constitutional right to abortion. If your wife is shivering and bleeding on the operating room table during a routine de delivery gone bad, her pressure dropping as she loses more and more blood or some unforeseen infection spreads and her doctors aren't sure if they can act, you will be the one praying that it's not too late. But first, what was Roe v. Wade? And why was it overturned? We break it down for you. In 1969, Norma McConvey, using the pseudonym Jane Roe, challenged criminal abortion laws in Texas. Henry Wade, the district attorney for Dallas County, was defending the anti-abortion law. McConvey was 25. She was single. She was pregnant with her third child when she filed the case. She had claimed that she was raped and appealed to be allowed to terminate her pregnancy. Her case was rejected and she was forced to give birth. The state forbade abortion as unconstitutional and only made an exception in cases where the mother's life was in danger. So we, we could be right back to the days before Roe, which many young people here don't even remember. But in 1973, her appeal reached the U.S. Supreme Court. Her case was heard alongside another woman from Georgia. They argued that abortion laws went against the Constitution as they violated a woman's right to privacy. The court ruled that the government lacked the power to prohibit abortions and that a woman's right to terminate her pregnancy was protected by the Constitution. What changed after Roe v. Wade? The ruling changed women's rights. Roe v. Wade created the trimester system that allowed a pregnant person absolute right to an abortion in the first three months of pregnancy. It allowed the state to regulate abortion procedures to protect the health of a pregnant woman, but it could not prohibit abortions. Roe v. Wade allowed the state to restrict or ban abortions in the last trimester to protect health of the pregnant person and to preserve fetal viability. Roe v. Wade prohibited the state from criminalizing abortions that were necessary to protect the life or health of the pregnant woman. How was Roe v. Wade overturned? For 49 years, Americans had the right to access abortion. But in 2022, the Supreme Court put an end to it. In 2018, Mississippi lawmakers had put a ban on abortions after 15 weeks. But a lower court had struck down the state law. The U.S. top court agreed to review the lower court's decision and ruled in favor of Mississippi's ban. This ended the constitutional right to abortion for millions of women. The Biden administration scrambled to compensate, but many red states enacted near total bans on abortion. 14 states have a total ban on abortion now, with limited exceptions in cases of rape and threat to life of the mother. While the number of abortions across the U.S. increased in 2023, the reality of large reproductive care deserts emerging is still glaring. We're seeing women scrambling across state lines to get the care they need. Just this week, a Major medical journal reported that after Roe was overturned, infant mortality in this country rose, in large part because women are being forced to carry fetuses that won't survive to term. One woman spent 22 days in jail on murder charges after she miscarried in her own bathroom. We are seeing doctors unsure if they can treat ectopic pregnancies. Doctors being told they can't treat a woman until she becomes so close to death 
that only a life of the mother exception will allow them to act. Republicans continue to advocate for a national abortion ban. Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump has opened up new attacks on contraception and in vitro fertilization. I was proudly the person responsible for the ending of something that all legal scholars, both sides, wanted and in fact demanded be ended. Roe v. Wade. Many states will be different. Many will have a different number of weeks or some will have more conservative than others and that's what they will be. So just imagine the profound effects for all of us if Donald Trump wins this election. In states that are already putting abortion bans into effect, his FDA could further outlaw patchwork systems of telehealth appointments and mail order pills, thereby eliminating the last remaining protections for women in those states. The election has been seeing the highest number of statewide abortion related measures appearing on the ballot. Abortion, women's health care has taken center stage in the race for president. Democratic nominee Vice President Kamala Harris has been a leading voice on reproductive rights. And I believe in the fundamental freedom of Americans to make decisions about their own bodies and not have their government tell them what to do. I will fight to restore what Donald Trump and his hand-selected Supreme Court justices took away from the women of America. She wants Congress to pass a national law codifying access to safe abortion and to restore Roe v. Wade. There is the tragic but very real possibility that in the worst-case scenario, you just might be the one holding flowers at the funeral. You might be the one left to raise your children alone. Please, do not, do not put our lives in the hands of politicians, mostly men, who have no clue or do not care about what we as women are going through. So I am asking y'all from the core of my being to take our lives seriously. Please.